Good morning, friends. As you all are aware that Budget 2023 was tabled on 1st February 2023 by our Honorable Finance Minister, many amendments have been proposed for charitable organizations. I am Ashish Agarwal from Team NGO Enabler and today in my video, I am going to discuss the key highlights from the budget which have an impact or are relevant for NGOs. There are seven major amendments, I repeat, there are seven major amendments in store for charitable organizations in this budget. The first and the most important amendment of all is the alignment of time limit for furnishing the form for accumulation of income and tax audit report. The date of filing form 9A and form 10 which is required to be filed for accumulation of income when the 85% minimum application cannot be done has been preponed. Earlier, the due date for filing such forms was the same as the due date for furnishing the return as prescribed under section 139 subsection 1 of the Income Tax Act. However, after the amendment, the due date stands preponed by at least two months before the due date so specified, which implies both the forms as applicable has to be now filed on or before 31st August of the assessment year. I repeat, both the forms as applicable has to be now filed on or before 31st August of the assessment year. Second amendment brought is the limit on the time period of reinstating of corpus fund and repayment of loans and borrowings in order to claim the application of income. As you all must be aware by now, in the Finance Act 2021, the amendment was brought wherein the corpus needs to be kept invested specifically in any of the forms specified in Section 11, Subsection 5, and if utilized, such expenses shall not be considered as application of income unless the corpus is reinstated subsequently. Similarly, repayment of borrowings shall be considered as an application only in the year of repayment. So, now any payments done out of the corpus fund in any previous year, I repeat, any payments done out of the corpus fund in any previous year subsequent to 1st April 2021 shall be considered as an application of income only if such amount has been reinstated back to corpus within a period of five years from the end of the financial year in which such application is done or within five years from which such borrowing was taken. Basically, a limit of five years has been prescribed for reinstating the use portion of the corpus fund and repayment of borrowings. In this regard, it has also been clarified that any amount which was utilized from corpus before 1st April 2021 shall not be considered as an application even if it is reinstated in any subsequent year because the amendment was made only with effect from 1st April 2021 and shall tend amount to double deduction. Next amendment is a huge setback for large sized charitable organizations who provide funding to the small size or grassroots NGOs for their functioning and implementation of various projects. It has been proposed that any donation made by one charitable organization to another charitable organization shall be allowed as an application only to the extent of 85% of the donation amount. I repeat, any donation made by one charitable organization to another charitable organization shall be allowed as an application only to the extent of 85% of the donation amount. Here, let me remind you that giving corpus donations between the two charitable organizations were already barred and now even on general donations, this restriction has been put. This provision will come into effect from financial year 2023-24. Fourth amendment brings some good news for existing charitable organizations which have already commenced their activities but were not registered under section 1023C or 12A, 12AA and 80G. After the budget 2021, such organizations first needed to apply for provisional registration and then again for the final one. So in this budget, it has now been proposed that such organizations which have already commenced their activities can directly make an application for regular approval under the specified subsections and need not apply for provisional registration. I repeat, the organizations which have already commenced their activities 
can directly make an application for regular approval under the specified subsections and need not apply for provisional registration. These amendments, however, shall be applicable with effect from 1st October 2023. After the amendment, provisional registration is now applicable only for newly registered charitable organizations and those organizations which were existing but didn't commence its activities till now. Next amendment is broadening the definition of specified violation for cancellation of registration under section 1023C or 12AB. It has been proposed that any false or incomplete or incorrect information is found in the application for provisional registration or re-registration which was done by the already registered organizations shall be considered as a specified violation and might lead to cancellation of registration of exemption. So it's very essential for the organizations to carefully fill up the forms as any incorrect information or mistakes or even filing incomplete form might lead to cancellation of registration. Yet another important amendment is attraction of section 115 TD that is tax on accredited income at the maximum marginal rate in cases where the application for re-registration or application for regular approval after the grant of provisional registration is not done within the due dates so specified under the income tax act. Upon violation the organization shall be deemed to have been converted into any form not eligible for registration or approval in the previous year in which such period expires. This amendment shall come into effect from financial year 2022-23 and the organization shall be liable to pay tax on accredited income within 14 days from the end of such previous year if such violation is found. So those organizations saying that they have forgot to apply for final registration after getting the provisional one, the consequences for such organizations have now been prescribed via attraction of section 115 TD. Last amendment which we would like to discuss is a kind of relief provided to the charitable organizations where it has been clarified that the exemptions under section 11, 12 or section 1023C will be available only if the return has been furnished within the time allowed under section 139 subsection 1 or section 139 subsection 4. This implies even in case of belated returns, the exemption shall not be revoked for charitable organizations and it shall continue to enjoy the exemption benefit. This amendment has been brought to negate the effect of amendment made in Finance Act 2022 where option of updated return was provided in which case the intention of the legislature would have been defeated. This amendment shall come into effect from financial year 2022-23. So this was all about the major amendments proposed by the budget 2023 for charitable organizations. For more such updates, keep tuned to our channel and don't forget to subscribe it. For any clarification, feel free to reach out to us through email or comment below. Thank you.